Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to talk about this set of watercolors here. This was a gift that was sent to me from the Artix Company along with a bunch of other supplies. They usually send like a, uh, kind of like a, a Happy New Year slash Christmas gift because I review their products throughout the year. It's, it's very kind of them. And we're gonna take a look at these paints today. We're also gonna talk about trends in watercolor and granulating paint has probably been the biggest trend over the last few years in watercolor. So I wanna talk about that a bit and look at all the granulating paints I have, their swatches, and maybe give you some advice about getting this look without necessarily buying quote unquote granulating watercolors, which I have talked about before in the past. And um, I wanna be completely transparent. I have, um, with the exception of buying a few single pigment tubes of colors I know would granulate, I haven't purchased any granulating paints, but I have been fortunate that um, that some people have shared their granulating paints with me, like shared pans of, of paints with me from their tubes, or and also different brands have sent me some granulating paints to review. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why I haven't really jumped in with my own money and bought some, and why you might not want to either, or maybe you do. I'm not going to judge you, I am just going to give you the information that I have and my opinions, and then you can do with what with that whatever you want. And, and I'm sure, and it all it varies. We're all different people. We all have different goals and we all have different looks we're going for in our art. And not, there's no one size fit all best product for anyone. So I want to begin by looking at this set of paints. Um, Paul Rubens does an excellent job at packaging. This is in a round box, which is unusual. It's unique. It's pretty big too. I would say, I'm just looking at my, um, at my mat here. This is about nine, a nine inch circle. This would be nice for actually storing uh, round watercolor paper after you've painted on it because sometimes that can be really hard to store. I mean, obviously you can put it in a square box, but when you've got a pretty box like this, you kind of want to use it. Um, then inside the box, there is this cardstock piece that's beautifully printed. Um, it's got a little example here of, uh, it's not really an example of the colors that are in this set though. It's just kind of like a, a mood or a vibe, I guess. And there is some information on the back size. It says Shi Yun. Um, and the beautiful, I love looking at the um, the Chinese calligraphy, I think it's so pretty. Actually, I find the way they name these paints, although I do understand Chinese, it sounds so poetic and beautiful. Um, and then we've got information on all the colors and they're all written out phonetically in English, I believe phonetically in English. Uh, Quin Shan Lu Lu? I don't know, I actually... Yu Zi Yan, Wei Lang Yin, Ban Jang Hong, Huang Yan Mu. I don't know if I'm at, at, at all pronouncing that correctly, but it does sound kind of pretty, I think. But we got that, that information there. And then the packaging itself, we have um, this tiny little vial of ox gall in the center. Now, it's kind of amber colored, so maybe it is... Um, it is natural, but it doesn't have an odor, which I was surprised. I thought ox gall would have a smell to it, but there's really, it smells kind of like mothballs. Um, it doesn't really have a strong smell, but I would say because it's amber that it probably is not synthetic. It probably is traditional ox bile, um, which is what's added to most watercolors unless otherwise noted, unless they're like, say they're a vegan formula or whatnot, they usually add that as a flow aid. And um, I don't have a big problem with ox gall because I know they don't kill the animal for the ox gall. You know, they don't, that's just, they're using the byproducts of like the meat industry and stuff. So um, it's not like a, a, a sable brush where they've killed the weasel to harvest the fur and they discard the rest. So, um, so anyway, we all have our, our lines in the sand, I guess. Um, we have six 15 ml tubes of paint. All the paint tubes have pigment numbers on them. Uh, let's take a look at the colors here because I wrote down the pigment numbers on this bigger swatch. This was um, hot press paper, so it wasn't the best thing to swatch on, but I just had a scrap and I was trying to like, look at the transparency. Very transparent colors. Um, we've got uh, a mix of cobalt blue and quinacridone rose. We've got um, a mix of ultramarine violet and um, Mars black. We've got a mix of ultramarine blue and thalo blue. I mean, thalo green rather blue shade. Uh, we've got a mix of ultramarine blue and quinacridone rose. We've got a mix of ultramarine blue, green gold, and an orange, pigment 48 orange. Uh, we've got a mix of, that's such a pretty color. Um, we've got a mix of ultramarine blue and green gold again here. So 
uh, most of these pigments are pretty common. They're ones you probably find in your in your stash. Anyway, you might not have PO48, you might not have um, PV15, but honestly I think having like PV15 on its own is much more valuable than having that mixed with PBK11. I think if you had uh, uh, not even PB28, that's cobalt blue, that's more expensive. If you had PB29, your typical ultramarine blue, I like an ultramarine blue deep. Turner ultramarine blue deep actually is very affordable, very granulating, extremely punchy color. I really love that. Um, if you had a PBK11, which is a Mars black or lunar black, again, I like the Turner version of that, and that's very inexpensive. And PV15, you can also, I already said that, you could get that in, um, uh, in Turner. It's really nice. And then um, yeah, if you took those those three colors, you could mix them with all kinds of things and get the granulating effect. So you really don't... I mean, there's nothing that's super unique about this set. I couldn't find this set on Amazon when I looked. I found their other layering set that's packaged very similarly, but it doesn't have the little Oxgall container. It's $46 or $47, somewhere in that ballpark, and it's, um, it's colors plus PBK11. So kind of to mimic the Van Gogh Dusk colors, and... I mean, if you just get the tube of PBK11, you can mix them with the other colors you have. So I really think that that would be the more practical way to go. But I did want to show this this kit because I do think it's really lovely, as all Paul Rubens things are. Feeling under here, I could feel a foam support. Um, but I also feel like this package, it takes up a lot of excess room for storage, which room is at a premium, storage space is at a premium. And I like I usually storage all my tubes of granulating colors together. Uh, unless they're, if they're a specialty granulating color, not if they're like just like a single pigment color, I'd have those with my regular, like my PV15s would be with my vi other violet paints. Um, so I don't know how easy it would be to take this apart so that you could use the box for something else. It seems like it's actually glued in there pretty well. Uh, yeah, I think if I pulled this apart, I'd end up destroying the box, but it is a beautiful presentation. If you wanted to get a gift for somebody, I think this would be really really lovely. So let's take a look of, at uh, the swatches again. Let's take a look at some artwork done with it and then um, maybe we could play with it a little bit. So these are the six colors. I swatched it also on a more textured watercolor paper here because I put it in full pans. I prefer to have my granulating colors in full pans and I put them in this tin where I have my supervision. These are all supervision through here except for that little L shape, that's the new Paul Rubens ones, and then these are the Aliana's watercolor creations um, handmade paints that that I added to this tin because it just made more sense to have them in here, and I swatched them down here on the side. The granulation is decent. Um, I also painted on some Arches paper to see if I could push that granulation a little bit more. Uh, so I just did this little kind of like wet into wet swatch, and hopefully you can see the texture. Now some colors granulated better than others. I found that the color that was the mix of PB29, which is ultramarine blue, and PB19, which is quinacridone rose, did not granulate all that much. Um, same with the the ultramarine blue and green gold color. I didn't find that granulated very much. The big granulator was the was the PV15 and PBK11. Those are two granulating colors they put together. That definitely had the most oomph out of all of these. Um, so just kind of like like I said, you could just get those colors and mix up your own your own uh, paints so that you could just kind of you if you know you want a granulating purple, you can use a granulating blue with a violet and you can get a granulating purple, or you could use you know a granulating purple. You could use some single pigment color that would give you a little bit more mixing versatility uh, because the more you mix pigments together, the more you have the opportunity to introduce mud, especially with granulating pigments, which tend to be sediment. Well, they are they are sedimentary. That's why they granulate because they don't soak into the paper like a dye does. It sits on top. That's why ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, you get beautiful granulation. Those are two sedimentary colors that sit on top of the paper. Um, I did this painting here and there's a real-time tutorial on my YouTube channel for this. Again, you can see the beautiful granulation in the sky that's caused from the PBK11 in that um, second purple color that we used there, purpley gray color. And uh, I mean, I, honestly, it is a little bit much to use just uh, like a granulating set to do a whole painting with, but I just kind of want to play with that and see uh, and see how it did. And they were, they were fine to work with, they were fun to work with. Um, but let's compare them with some other granulating sets that maybe you have, that maybe you want, maybe you're trying to decide whether you want to get into this. And then I'm going to show you my granulating palette I made with the colors I already had just in my stash in case that's something you want to do. And I do have a whole video on that as well. Uh, so let's look at this palette here. This it has 
the Supervision. Um, this is a Supervision original set of 10 that used to be on Amazon. I don't think you could get it anymore. There were some issues with this paint and separating in the tube. So if you didn't pan it um, and you left it like liquid in the tube, then like the colors would just kind of bleach out of them. It was weird, especially this color here, this rose ash, like the red was just disappearing if you left it in the tube. Now I have pans of this and everything was working out, has been working out just fine. My friend Rosie shared her, uh, she made me some pans and sent them over. So I haven't used it from the tube. I'm not sure how that goes, but uh, from pans, it was fine. The colors were pretty, but I don't think they're selling that set anymore. And then these 15 here are sold in sets of three, and you can kind of see the three, how they're grouped together. And those are by Supervision, and they're 15 ml tubes, and I think it's like $25 for the set of three colors. So it's, um, you know, I think these are, yeah, just like the Paul Rubens, probably around 7 or $8 a tube. Um, you do tend to use more color, I find, when you're using these granulating colors to get that effect that you might want. And then these down here were small supervision tubes, the Rock Plus Mica colors. I think it was Mermaid Coast that I have here. And they're pretty, but again, you could take any of your pearlescent colors and mix them with gran a granulating color and a dye color or a, a non-granulating color and get that same effect. So it's kind of it's kind of a fun, it might be like a little inspiration or a little Kickstarter to kickstart your, your inspiration, but it's not something that you need. You can do all of this stuff with your regular pigments and you might... And those, having those pigments on their own rather in mixes, I think, are more versatile and more useful. It just depends if, you know, it depends on your preference. I'm not going to tell you what to do. If painting with these gives you joy and makes you excited, then, um, then more power to you. I think that's great. Obviously, I enjoy using these, but um, would I have paid for them? Would I have paid with my own money, my hard-earned money? Would I have bought these? Probably not, unless I had a bunch of people like asking for a review of them. Um, they're fun. I enjoy them, but I probably wouldn't have purchased them. Now this set here was another beautiful gift from my friend Rosie. She does definitely spoil me. She has a shop on Etsy where she sells handmade sketchbooks. This is the set from Mar one of the sets from Marsh Mash's watercolor. She has beautiful handmade granulating paints. They are a lot of fun to use. And this set here uh, comes with a nice variety of colors. They don't wear down as fast as some of the other brands that I've used. And um, the colors are beautiful. She also has really generous dot cards that you can purchase and try out before you invest in a pan because they are probably on the more expensive side as far as uh, your granulating watercolors go. And uh, But there's a little look at the swatch from this particular set and it comes with a little ceramic mixing area that's really not quite big enough to be honest but it is awfully cute and uh, um, and I do enjoy this. I'll take this and I'll set that, use that with a regular set of watercolors so that I get the versatility of colors I can layer up and get really saturated and get really dark and get really crisp along with the ones that will give me texture. Because really you're only going to see the granulating effect if you've got a wet wash of these colors. If you're just painting a picture kind of um, on dry paper with not a lot of open area, you're, it's kind of a waste to use these because you're not going to see the effects of the granulating. So if you've, if you've had that issue where you have, um, where you've been painting with them, you're like, I don't get the, what the fuss is about. It's just not, it's not really working for me. I'm not seeing the effects that everybody else is getting. That's probably, you probably just don't have enough large wide open spaces for the colors to, to settle out and you've got to let them dry naturally. So this set here is, it's a bit of a mismatch, but it's mostly, um, the, the Schmincke Super Granulating Colors. And I will say that I think Schmincke's Super Granulating Colors, if you are going to go with a pre-made granulating color, they make, they offer the best, the best um, effect. They seem to, they seem to split apart and give you more texture than these other brands that I've used. Um, so if you definitely want to get something that's, that's pre-made with multiple colors, I think the Schmincke, they've, they've really refined the formula and they're going to give you the best bang for your buck. They're also probably, as far as commercial made paints, the most expensive. The handmade paints are going to be a little bit more generally, but they're they're going to cost you more than Supervision and um, and uh, Paul Rubens. Daniel Smith has like their Primatech colors <clears throat> as well and some uh, mixes like Moon Glow and Undersea Green and stuff that will split apart too. But again, you can make those. And I think Schmincke is paints are more light fast than Daniel Smith's in the super granulating family. But of course you can obviously go color by color. Now generally the, the Schmincke colors are sold in sets of five tubes that have, um, you know, a certain, uh, like this is the urban set here on this like postcard. They have like a theme like 
urban, ocean, tundra, desert, things like that. Um, I don't remember how all these worked out into what into what families, but um, you can see just an overall look at the Schmincke range. They, I think they now have a half pan set of all the super granulators. It's it's pricey. I'm thinking it's around four hundred dollars for like a forty eight set. Um, but you know it's definitely an option. And if you just use it for areas where you want that big open granulating uh, burst of pigment it probably would last you quite a long time. And I don't know how long this trend is going to go for. It seems to me like things go one way and then completely the other way when it comes to art trends. So it could be in a year or two that this is passe and nobody wants to see granulating colors again. I mean, I don't know. It's the, the way the way, <laughs> the way the art world and the craft world has moved recently. It's becoming a lot like fast fashion, in my opinion. And um, yeah, I would say make sure you like it if you're going to buy it because it may not be trendy for very long. And um, don't try to try to pick apart whether you like something because you're just used to seeing it or if you like it because you really like it. I like this in in uh, in doses definitely, but I but I also like to mix my colors. So if I'm using a super granulating color somewhere, I tend to want to mix it with all my other colors too to make sure it harmonizes. So that's why this buying the pre-made super granulating colors is not how I spend my money, although I'm happy to review them. They're so much fun. It probably sound like a uh, big hypocrite. Um, these are the meshes dots. You can see they're really big. You get a lot of paintings out of these. So if you're unsure, or maybe you're thinking this is just a trend, maybe I don't want to buy a tube of anything, but I do want to play with the colors and play with the idea, buy some of her dot cards. You're going to get several paintings worth out and, uh, then you can see if you really like it and which ones you really like, and then you could buy a pan if you want. And plus, I mean, I love supporting small businesses. Um, I think it's wonderful that that's an option in the space. And uh, yeah, I definitely love giving her a shout out because her paints are beautiful, for sure. Now, this is what I did. And this is what I would recommend if you're on the fence, or actually, I just recommend you doing this before you buy any, just because you may find that you don't need them after you do this exercise. And I have a whole video and blog post about this, so I'm not going to go super in-depth here, but what I did was I went through all my tubes, and this was this process took a couple days. I swatched out any color which I knew the pigment could be granulating. Now sometimes, depending on who makes the paint, how finely it's milled, and um, a few other factors, like a color may granulate or it may not. You're going to have some raw sienas that granulate and some raw sienas that don't. You're going to have some cadmium reds that granulate and some that don't. Um, it just depends on, it, well, granulation can depend on a few things. You need that big wet wash of paint. You need to let it dry. You need a paper that's got texture to it. And I like to have a fairly heavily sized paper too, so the stuff can sit on the top of the paper for even longer, can kind of puddle out a bit. And the paint needs to be milled, not super, super fine. It's got to have a little bit of a coarseness to its texture. And I have a feeling that Schmincke is probably... Um, not milling their paint as finely for the super granulators, and that's why it's giving us the better effect rather than just mixing the pigments together, which is what you'd be doing if you were making your own set. So I went through, I pulled the colors that I thought would be the best granulators, and I do have these all listed out on my blog with the um, with the brand that I'm using, so you can pick exactly the ones that I'm using if you want to. Um, I have some from Renaissance, I have some from Turner, which are very affordable brands, I have some from Daniel Smith, I have some from um, My Mary Blue, you know, there's a, there's a whole range of different brands I'm using here, because I'm not brand agnostic. You can use brand, you can use stuff from all different brands. I've got some core in there, you know, just use what works. And then I made this swatch here that is representative of where it is in the palette, so I would know what I have when I'm going to use it. This is a great color here, Cadmium Bordeaux. It's a Renaissance color. It's a, it's a cadmium red pigment, but it's got this good, beautiful burnt quality to it. And then that cadmium red also gorgeous and has a beautiful granulation to it. Um, it's, it just comes down to trying what you have and seeing what's going to give you the best effect. Any color that says Mars generally has a beautiful effect. I don't think I have my, actually, I'm not sure if I have my, my Mary Blue Potter's pink in this set because I think I ran out of spaces and I bought this after I, uh, after I put this together. Like your cerulean blues have a beautiful granulation to them. Your ultramarine, anything ultramarine, ultramarine violet, ultramarine blue, um, manganese violet, anything manganese, man manganese will have a beautiful granulation to it generally. Um, anything cobalt, anything, a lot of things that are cadmium will have a beautiful granulation. And it's, and the yellows are tough because there's not a lot of contrast 
or a lot of value contrast in the color yellow. So even if it is granulating, it's hard to see it with a white paper. Uh, but I did find that like, Gothite from Daniel Smith had a decent granulation to it. Um, and that I think that was even like a Cotman raw sienna from back in the day. I don't know if, if it still is, but... And, oh, Cotman Nickel Titanate Yellow from way back in the day. They don't make it anymore, but that had some granulation to it. So going through your stuff, you'll get to know your paints better. And then um, you can make your own bespoke palette of your granulating colors and put them together so you know if I mix with these colors, I'll get a granulating color. And it's something I already have. So I like that way of expanding my palette better than buying a bunch of sets that are, or buying a bunch of tubes that are granulating mixes. But then again, it's fun to try new paint. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna poop on anyone's party. I certainly try plenty of paint. I certainly buy plenty of paint. So I am not judging anyone for how you choose to, um, to do your, your stuff. One thing I'll say about Daniel Smith, if you like uh, some of their Primatech colors that granulate, see if they offer it in the stick because those Primatech colors are tough to rewet. But if you buy the Daniel Smith sticks, and I'll recommend a couple that I really love, Sodalite, which is like this um, kind of like navy bluish black color, Serpentine, which is like a sap green color, and Cobalt Teal, which is just beautiful. It's it's that color actually, but it's just, it's from the Daniel Smith in the stick form. Those three sticks granulate so well and they're so affordable because they're, I don't know why their sticks are cheaper than their, um, than their tubes for the amount of pigment you get, but they are, and they seem to be the identical quality there and they rewet so much easily, more easily. So I would recommend those. And in fact, I think if I buy more Daniel Smith colors, I'll be just getting the sticks from now on. Um, but anyway, clearly I don't need any more paint, but I thought just I would I would share that with you. But I have this whole list on my blog with photos and stuff, so I would recommend checking that out if you want to cross-reference with what you have. But there's so many different brands nowadays and so many different options that you probably have something that will work in your stash that you've kind of forgotten about. And um, rather than jumping on a trend that may be over in a year, and you're never going to use that paint up in a year. Well, maybe you will. I certainly won't because I can, <laughs> I shop or I have products come in faster than I can use them. Um, you know, it just uh, it just gives you a little bit more more bang for your buck. Now, to get more granulating effects, you can use salt water as your clean water to paint with. That will give you a much more granulated effect in your paints. Um, the jury's out whether that shortens lifespan of your paintings. I don't really think it does, but, you know, obviously you can be the judge of that. You can decide what you want to do. There's also granulation mediums, and you use you have to be pretty generous with this, but it will increase the granulation in your granulating colors. I don't find that it really makes non-granulating colors granulating, although Winsor Newton claims it does. I don't find that to be the case, but it does make your granulating colors more uh, textured. Um, and they had these recently on sale on uh, Amazon for like four bucks, so I bought another jar of it. But every day over at Blick, it's only like six bucks, so it's not a huge a huge savings. If you get them at Blick, you'll just you'll be paying way less. Uh, if you want to try it out, I'm not a huge fan of this, but it does help. It does help if you want to get a little more texture. It's just not as, you know, I don't think, feel like the claims really match this product as much as, uh, as much as they say they do. But honestly, nowadays I'm finding the claims that I'm seeing on our products to be absolutely ridiculous. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, call truth to power here on my channel because I don't want to see you guys wasting your money, especially when you have perfectly good perfectly good paints in your stash that are going to do the job. I'm going to keep reviewing paints because, you know, I'll separate the wheat from the chaff. I, I enjoy trying new things. And if you enjoy trying new things, go ahead and do it. I'm not telling you not to, but I'm, I'm telling you that it's okay to opt out and take a break and, you know, use what you have because, honestly, I, I don't want to die with a ton of unused supplies. I want to, I want to use them while I'm here on this earth. And I'm sure most of us do. Most of us want to use what we have and not let it go to waste. And yeah, it's kind of scary to use something up, but doesn't it feel good when you use something up? You can always buy another tube. They're not going to stop making the paint unless people stop buying it. And I see this fervor of people going crazy when a paint color, when a paint pigment gets discontinued. It's discontinued because it's not popular anymore. It's not popular anymore with like the big auto and plastics manufacturers that, um, that really drive the uh the paint making 
the paint making industry. And generally, when a paint goes discontinued, there are still sources for it. It's not the end of the world. And they do a good job at manufacturing the colors. And I know, like, I just bought some manganese blue from Da Vinci because they still have some of the PEB33 pigment. They mix it with... Um, they do mix it with another pigment to kind of stretch it a bit, but I was curious. Um, but you know, if, if a pigment goes discontinued, then I mean, I just put it out of my mind and if I have it, great. If I don't, I don't worry about it because I don't think there's been a pigment that's gone away that can't be replicated. Um, and it's, it's not like there's mines that are, that are running out of this stuff. It's some, it's somebody in a factory. It's, it, these are synthetically made pigments. They're not out digging them out of the ground. So, I mean, in that case, I might be like, oh, wow, that's going extinct because you can't find it anymore. That's not the case. It's just, they're not making it anymore because the demand for it has gone down. Um, I know that it is used as a marketing tactic to sell paint. Uh, scarcity is a huge marketing tactic, making us feel like we're going to miss out and our, our artwork won't be as good if we don't have that thing is just baloney. It's baloney. You don't need to buy into it. You don't need to believe it. It is absolutely untrue. There are so many good brands out there, more and more coming up every day. And um, probably the best paint in the world you already have in your stash. You've been painting for any amount of time. What I'm finding is that a lot of legacy brands are cheapening their quality, especially when it comes to like their student grade lines. A Cotman, like Windsor Newton's a good example of this. They're really cheapening their quality in their student grade lines. Um, I don't know what their professional grade, I haven't tried their professional grade recently. I mean, what I have is older stock. Um, but then I'm seeing these kind of, these companies coming out of um, Poland and China and um, Korea that are really bringing their A game and they're coming in with really high quality products at a very affordable prices. Um, I'm sure part of that is like a currency conversion thing. Part of it is probably cost of labor as well. It's definitely cost of labor is cheaper in these com in these countries. But um, and even some student grade products on Amazon, I'm finding to be better than student grade products from the legacy brands at, for way way cheaper. Um, so. All of this to say is that we're not, the world's not running out of paint. The paint you have in your stash is just as good as everything that's coming out. Um, do an exercise like this, figure out what colors granulate if you're curious about this and you don't uh, have any of the premix tubes. Um, or buy the premix tubes if you like them. I just showed you a bunch of swatches of, of what's out there. Um, personally, I'm very appreciative to have those and to be able to try them and to bring this information to you. But would I spend my money on them? No, I would buy the single pigment colors that I would normally be putting in my palette and I would be mixing from there. Um, and they'd have to be bringing some really unique color or texture for it to deserve a place in my palette. And there you go. There's my two cents. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it gave you a little bit of ease of pressure of that burden feeling like you need to have it all because, you know, what you need is within you. Thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little mini rant. <laughs> Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.